Well, good morning, YouTube. I hope you are doing well. I am working from home today, and one of the things that I need to do is create a worksheet for my students. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you how I'm creating self-grading worksheets. I know, a teacher's dream. So I am going to use GoFormative to do that, and the good news is that it's free. And if you have some worksheets on your Google Drive or you need to upload them from Word, it works with all of that. So let me show you how I create them, and I'll tell you all about how I'm using them in my class. I use GoFormative for all of my self-grading worksheets. So I went to GoFormative.com. I signed up using my Google email and password. However, you can sign up just by creating your own username and password if you wish. Now, when you're in this window and you want to start a new formative, you can go to No Formative. And you'll see this little plus sign bouncing up and down. So this plus sign is where you access all the different question types. Now, as I mentioned, this video is about how I use Go formative to create worksheets, specifically self-grading worksheets. So I'm going to click this button right down here where it says upload your own content. My worksheet is located in my Google Drive. So I am going to select which account the worksheet is located under. And then I am doing a naming and formulating worksheet with polyatomic ions. And so notice um, you're allowed to upload about 25 pages per month for free with the free version. Um, and so now it's just going to take a moment for it to process and it'll take all of the pages that are within that document and put it inside GoFormative. So if you notice, if I kind of look at the first one, there's also the second one. So this is a two page worksheet. And then on the right hand side, it says click on the image to add questions. So what I'm going to do is go over to where it says number one here and click on that. And when I do that, it has a little circle there. And so it asks me to select what question type I want. So the question type that I am going to use is a short answer question. When I click on it, it says to type in your question. To be honest, I never do that just because of the fact that it is a worksheet, the students have the directions at the top, I don't really feel a need to write the question right in this spot. So I always tell the students, make sure you read the worksheet, that'll tell you what to type in the boxes. Down here though is like the answer key. So when you click on it, it's going to um, ask you to type your correct answer. And so this first one, the answer is silver nitrate for AgNO3. So when I do this, um, I am very careful to make sure I put in capital letters. Um, in the free version, you don't have the ability to make sure that it's um, case sensitive. So um, now I do have the full version, so I did make sure that mine, it was clicked on to be case sensitive, but uh, again, totally not a huge deal. Um, but then as far as like including the numbers, you probably might want a subscript in there, which you can also tell your students to include subscripts, or you could have your students alternatively do an underscore like that. Um, it's really up to you. I'm going to do another one just to show you. So I'm going to write, so I'm going to click on this again, and then I'm going to go to, um, short answer. And this one is barium acetate. So I'm going to type in BA parentheses C2H3O2 close the parenthesis too. Again, you can absolutely put all those underscores in there. Um, and then let me just show you what it would look like if you were a student. So if I click on this little eyeball up here and you go to preview, this is what it would look like if it were a student. And then you had the option of looking as if it was in a tablet mode or if it was on a um, phone device. Now my students all hold Chromebooks, so this is what it would look like on the Chromebook. So you notice these are the two questions that I've already created. And what you can do is if you were a student, you would just type in the answer. So it would be AGNO3, and then again, this would be BA parentheses C2H3O2, close the parentheses 2 And um, as your students go through the worksheet, you will start to see a bar that will appear on the right-hand side that they can scroll through. Um, so what I have the students do is they, if they click on the number, it'll actually take them to that specific question type. So for example, if they're in the worksheet and maybe like they're all the way at the bottom of the scroll, they can click on the number, it'll automatically take them to question one. And then as the teacher, so that you can kind of see what it will look like if your students are getting it right, you can go to view responses. And then when you go to view responses, you'll actually go to totals and you can see, right, I'm Miss Rez, so I'm just trying to, to again see what it would look like if I were a student. And then you'll also notice when you click on these, you have the option of leaving feedback. So you could say, for example, great job. And that will be a message that's communicated to your students. So a lot of times when I'm doing this with my kids, 
I will be monitoring what answers they're typing in. And then as they're um, typing in answers, if I could see that they're getting them wrong, what I'll do is I'll type in something like, hey, why don't you come back to, you, to the meet? Something like that. So that they know, hey, I'm not doing this right. Maybe I should go in, back to the Google Meet to talk to Ms. Randazzo. So this has been just completely awesome and transformative in my teaching in that I've been able to give the students um, immediate feedback. You also have the ability to assign this via Google Classroom. So if I go to assign, you can create classes in formative or you can use Google Classroom Sync or if you have like a clever roster you can also do that. Now I always assign it via Google Classroom but obviously this is my personal account so I am not going to assign it via Google Classroom right now but when you do that it'll assign it right to your kids right away. Um, let me see if I can actually show you let me just you can also have guest students if you want but I do want to show you some of the settings so this is kind of cool um, now obviously you don't have as many settings if you are using the free version but you do have the option of restricting to individual students if you use the paid version you can schedule open and close times you can also um, have a time limit from when they open it like if you were doing quizzes or something like that but what you do have options for is after submission, you can use um, keep it visible where there's no edits allowed. So um, sometimes I actually select if it's a quiz to make it hidden so they're not able to see what they wrote. Um, but for worksheets, I usually will select keep visible, no edits allowed. And then to return scores, I will select to return the scores when the assignment is closed or after the student submits. And then finally, you have the option of when to return the correct answers. So you could, for example, select when closed or again after the student submits. That's preferably what I do with worksheets. After they submit, I want that immediate feedback for them. And then when you're finally done, you just click assign and then your formative is ready to go. At this point, I'm mostly using Go Formative worksheets with my college prep chemistry class. Um, I, we've done them quite a bit with our naming and formula rating unit. Um, in the past, though, I have used them for do nows. I obviously use Go Formative for assessments as well. The students are pretty comfortable with it. I love that I have the ability to assign it via Google Classroom so the students can see exactly what the assignment is due. I can get an idea of how they're progressing through the questions, and then I absolutely love the feature that I can respond to them and say, hey, why don't you come in for some help? So it's a, been a really great tool. And of course, best of all, there's not a whole lot of grading for me to do. The fact that it's self-grading makes it super easy for me. The only thing is, if you are using the free version, you're probably going to want to caution your students about making sure that they are including capital letters when they need to. If you want them using subscripts, make sure that you tell them that, you know, they need to copy and paste subscripts in there. But, um, you know, for me, it's made things really simple to help to streamline the process. And hopefully it's done the same for you. So um, if you use GoFormative already, that's great, because one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to post a bonus down below. So in the description, I want to give you access to the two worksheets that I created. So I have a binary ionic one and then I have the ternary ionic one that I created. So if you click on it, it'll add it right to your Go Formative and then your students can use it as is. Um, it's completely free. And so that's my gift to you. If you're in your naming and formula writing unit, I hope you'll use it and I hope it'll help you be able to rest a little bit easier knowing that that lesson plan is done. Um, but either way, thank you so much for watching. I know this is a shorter video, but I miss you guys. It's been such a crazy, crazy year, but I'll be sure to check in with you guys soon.